Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Akila, and in today's video, I'm going to be talking about something that I don't usually talk about, which is also very personal, my fertility journey and the story of my ectopic pregnancy, how it burst, the surgery that followed, and touching on um, part of my battle with PCOS. So it's been three months since I had a miscarriage, an ectopic pregnancy, and I'm feeling really great. So I'm in a really good space physically and emotionally and I felt like I wanted to talk about it partially because it felt really weird coming back to YouTube and not updating you about this massive thing that happened in my life. Um, and it also is, yeah, just a life update and it's also for whoever needs to watch this to help them heal so that you don't feel alone maybe in your fertility journey, whatever the issue or worry may or may not be. I also hope that through this video um, we could raise awareness around miscarriage, normalize talking about miscarriage and um, yeah, so this is my story. So if you're one of my subscribers it goes without saying that I have been pretty absent for the past year, I don't think I've posted a video in on YouTube for like five or six months and part of the reason for that was um, Abdul Malik and I decided that despite the pandemic the two of us were going to start our family as we had planned to do in 2020. A big part of that was coming to grips with my PCOS. So for the whole of 2020, I had only had something like three periods by the time July, August had rolled around. So I decided to start cutting gluten and dairy, minimizing my stress and workload, which is why I wasn't on YouTube, because I just felt like that pressure to be consistent and also just the general mental health implications of the pandemic were just it was just giving me added pressure and spiking that cortisol which really throws your hormones out and it's just was not going to help my condition so i decided to take a step back from a lot of things i also decided to start acupuncture and i started seeing a doctor who specializes in chinese medicine and acupuncture and she's helped so many women um, conceive babies we haven't tried before just by the way we hadn't tried before this um, but I knew I had this condition and that it was giving me a lot of problems and I was incredibly insecure without even trying I was incredibly insecure about whether or not I would even be able to fall pregnant because of this condition because I was thinking I can't even get a period so how am I gonna make a whole baby, a whole human being? Do I even have the tools? What's going on? You know, so I embarked on this journey of self-care and threw all my focus into a lifestyle change that was gonna help my condition. Anyways, after only a month of not being hectic with work, eating better and going for acupuncture, um, Abdul Malik and I tried once, not expecting anything, and I fell pregnant that very first time. Now I know a lot of women say that you only get those first pregnancy symptoms you know 10 days to a week in and you can only test after about two weeks but I knew in my gut I knew that I was pregnant um, four days afterwards because I woke up with really sore boobs and I got so excited and for the entire day I was cracking all of these jokes with Dr. Malik and I'd be like you need to lift this for me because the baby doesn't want to carry heavy loads today or the baby is craving a chocolate can you please go to the corner shop and go buy me some but I checked my period calendar app and it actually said to me that my period was due or that it was like a month after my period that I got the month before so I realized maybe the achy boobs were to do with my period however then two weeks passed and the boobs were still sore and there was no period which was very weird um, I was also very emotional but I wasn't also sure if that was just general pandemic mental health issues because I did encounter quite a bit of that last year anyways took a pregnancy test came back negative I was totally fine with that wasn't expecting anything the first time around anyway so I went about my life and September was a very busy month for us with work but I still just wasn't feeling okay um, I was eating so healthy at this point for two or three months and my weight was just staying the same. It was like water retention. But I also have this thing where when I'm really stressed out, I gain weight. It's just that cortisol weight, um, stress weight, it happens. And so I was getting really frustrated. I felt like I was being gaslit by my own body because I thought I was going crazy. No pregnancy, no period no weight loss what was going on and so I took another test 
and that pregnancy test also came back negative. And I even spoke to my doctor and she said, you know, when you're doing this acupuncture treatment, your hormones can fluctuate because what we're actually doing here is we're trying to regulate your hormones. So if both tests came back negative and you don't have any other symptoms, this is also completely normal for you to still have sore boobs because of the estrogen and I don't know what else. So I thought, okay, cool. However, there were still these moments for the next month or two that my gut was just saying to me, you know what, don't do this, you might be pregnant. Don't do this, you might be pregnant. Fast forward two months after conception. On the 18th of October was my birthday and also my automatic six year anniversary. So we went to a little town called Swellen Dam. We went to a place called Fazenda. It's so beautiful. I've been wanting to go there for ages and it was a perfect time. And um, first day we were there, spent the night, everything was fine. I felt perfectly fine. And then the next morning also felt perfectly fine. We had breakfast, we were eating brownies, we were enjoying the view. Um, and then we were about to just shoot one or two travel content pictures because this place is just ridiculously beautiful. And as I was standing on the deck by the pool and looking at this lake view and these beautiful mountains, I'm dressed, we're ready to go up to Malik is literally picking the camera settings and I get this intense cramp and the cramp is in my uterus, in my pelvic floor muscles and in my bum cavity for full disclosure <laughs> um, and it was a pain unlike anything I've ever felt before. I've had burst ovarian cysts which are also very much crippling in that moment you can't even walk and this was a thousand times worse. Um, I thought it was just like a random cramp that was gonna pass so I stood there and I waited and it wasn't passing it got worse and worse and worse and then I walked over to the bed I lay down on the bed and I kept trying to find a position that will give me relief. You know, like when you have your period, maybe if you curl up in fetal position, it's a bit better. Some women say they put their feet up. I was trying all these different things, but any slight movement of my leg in any direction was just giving me the most excruciating pain that was unbelievable. And then I said, okay, I'll give it like 15 minutes. If this doesn't pass, I'm, I think we should go to the, the ER. I don't, now that I look at it, I don't even think I should have waited that long. Um, I just thought maybe it's my period, but then it was also again this gut feeling that said to me, I think you're having a miscarriage. But then I also thought a miscarriage is supposed to be so sore, even if I am having one. Anyways, eventually I said to him, okay, we can go to the ER, but I think I actually want to throw up because at this point, I'm, I don't know if it's a fever, but I am sweating. My clothes are completely wet. My hair is wet from the sweat. Um, I'm nauseous and I go over to the bathroom and I just start throwing up and when I was done throwing up I fainted then I got up threw up again fainted again then um, eventually I said okay I'm gonna pull my strength together I'm gonna pull myself together and we can we're gonna go to the hospital at this point Abdul Malik is gathering my things because we don't know if it's a government hospital or what type of hospital it is but he's packing a bag for me just in case. As I left the bathroom, I fainted again in the kitchen um, and I just laid there on the floor because at this point my body was burning up so much. I was getting so unbelievably hot and I was so weak. I was so, so, so weak. I, yeah, I passed out on the floor and this cold cement floor was the first tiny bit of relief that I felt like I could get from this heat. They zoomed me all the way to hospital. Thankfully, it was only about um, maybe five or 10 minutes away and took me out of the car, put me in a wheelchair. I fainted again in the wheelchair. And then next thing I remember, I was on the ER like table thing. They were doing blood tests. They were doing ultrasounds and they had to stick a bedpan under me to do a urine test. Um, and I was just screaming in pain because it was this entire time I was just screaming and crying in pain and I just wanted them to operate. I was just saying, just do any operation, just do anything, just put me under anesthetic because I just wanted to be put under so that I wouldn't have to feel this pain. So I had about three doctors and three nurses all on me and they already warned me. They said, listen, we think this may be an ectopic pregnancy. 
um, the ultrasound is showing a lot of fluid in your uterus, which we now know was internal bleeding. And um, we think your, your tube actually burst with the embryo. And um, we're gonna have to operate right now. We're basically gonna have to do a C-section kind of a surgery. We're gonna cut in your stomach, we're gonna tie your tube, and we're gonna take this thing out. And at this point, somebody came bustling in and said to me, you are actually pregnant. And then they said, okay, cool. Then this is most definitely the case. And when this person told me you're pregnant, it's the one thing that I could say through all the pain was, I knew it, I knew it. And it was a lot to process because I was already screaming with pain. And um, I just said, okay, do it. Just just take me take me to the OR. Like, I am I'm ready. I, I was just over it. I was praying. I was crying. I was praying. I was crying. They put me on the table. And I just remember them scrubbing in. And everybody was still prepping the, the OR. And I was saying, just give me the anesthetic, give me the drugs, please just give me the drugs, I can't anymore. And I felt like this pain was so bad that I, that I thought I'm probably gonna even die because this is so bad. And I started praying and praying and praying and they gave me the anesthetic. It wasn't a mask, I think it was injected. And it didn't actually make it any easier because I could still feel pain and the only thing that was different was that I was hallucinating and dreaming under this anesthesia like crazy. I was having insane dreams of the operation happening. Things were swirling around. Um, and then there was this moment of like peace. And at this point I thought to myself, okay, I think I'm dying now. Well, I think I've died. I think I've crossed over. And I'm going to wait now for the angels to come and fetch me. Um, and yeah, you know, I just kind of made my peace and I was just waiting. And I was waiting. And then before I knew it, Abdul Malik was, um, you know, tapping me awake. And he said, babe, the operation is done. It was a success and obviously everything had happened so fast that he and I hadn't had a moment to even grasp the fact that I was actually pregnant and we didn't know. So because I was coming out of the anesthesia and I was so out of it, all I kept saying to him was, we made a baby, we made a baby. And then he would talk to me and the doctors would talk to me and I would just touch him on the hand because I'm coming out of anesthesia and I am totally out of it and I just keep saying we made a baby and then he would talk some more and I would say are my parents here yet what's happening blah 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 and then I would just cut him off again and say we made a baby and I think that's because I was so out of it that it was still the only thing that was the biggest shock for me more than anything else more than the op more than the pain more than anything, making a baby was the biggest shock for me because like I said, I was so insecure because I couldn't even have a period. I couldn't even ovulate. It was mind blowing that the first and only time that we ever tried to conceive and we're not even hoping for anything. We got it right, even if we got it wrong, if that makes sense. So I had to stay in a hospital for three more days because I'd lost two liters of blood with the internal bleeding so I had to have um, transfusions and drips and I had to be put on iron and I was on a catheter I couldn't walk for three days um, thankfully the iron made me really constipated and because of the catheter I did not have to leave my bed for three days which was awesome I could just lay there and just exist um, I was put on a lot of pain medication and even with the strongest pain tablets, even with morphine, I still felt the pain really, really, really badly. I've said this a couple of times that this whole experience has given me this newfound next level respect for C-section moms. You guys, everybody, society, people who say if you didn't push, you're lazy or you are whatever, you guys need to put a whole lot of respect on C-section mom's names because let me tell you that the after-op pain was 
horrible. You can't sneeze, you can't laugh, you can't even do you can't even sit up without being in extreme pain. You can't even walk. I can't imagine having to go through that cut, which may even be worse because I had a tube tied but they didn't cut into my uterus and now you've got an extra layer of muscle that's healing on top of what I had. And then you must look after a newborn and breastfeed and get to know this whole person and how do you do it? How do you do it? You can't even walk. So yeah, after three days, we made the two and a half hour road drive back home. My parents um, came out and after I finally checked out of the other place, the three of them got an Airbnb and they just stayed out there and came to visit me by the window in hospital every day. Because thankfully this hospital was really tiny. I'm talking tiny, tiny. I think they only take something like 15 to 20 patients in the entire hospital because it's a small town. Um, and because of COVID, people weren't really allowed to visit. But because it's so small, sometimes they'd be sneaky and let Abdul Malik in um, for like five minutes at a time uh, because there also weren't a lot of patients. And um, my parents would come to the window because it's a single story hospital and they would just come and talk to me and check on me and like drop stuff off for me through the window. Um, yeah, and then we made our way home after three days and um, the aftercare journey was really hard. Even a week later, I was struggling to walk, like stand up straight and walk. Um, I was eating in bed all the time because even if I just sat up for too long, I was extremely nauseous. Um, the recovery time in total is between six to eight weeks. I was doing it really well because I was also going for acupuncture still. I really had amazing doctors looking after me and um the medical team at Swellendam hospital were incredible and um so i healed up really really nicely i had the best version of a bad situation so um yeah i stayed in bed for about four weeks um Every time I tried to get up too early though, my body would remind me, it's not your time, girl. It's really not your time. So I would go out here and there, you know, I'd go for a quick dinner with Abdul Malik or quickly go to the mall or I went to my friend's wedding, but I would have never missed that for the world. And then I really feel like I'm fine. And then the pain just kicks in really bad. And I was reminded, it is not your time. And it's so crazy that once six weeks hit, literally on the day six weeks because they say six to eight weeks that was the day that i never got any pain ever again because even four days before that we were on safari and i was quiet biking felt completely fine was very brave of me to do that maybe not the smartest thing but i really felt fine but the next day i had lots of pain so every time i was humbled and put back into bed especially by Abdul Malik, um he was a really amazing caretaker uh, it really allowed me to continue to do the emotional work that comes with losing a child and um, the shock of everything, the shock and trauma of um, having this big operation and not being able to do anything for myself, not having to walk, I mean, not being able to walk and um, just really, it was a really physically emotionally it was a lot mentally it was a lot to wrap my head around for two weeks i also battled with really bad night sweats so i'd wake up the next morning completely soaked and freezing i also um had really bad ptsd so right before i would nod off to bed i'd be fine the whole day right before i'd nod off to bed i'd have really really hectic flashbacks and it was just like a movie trying to play all the time it was as if my mind was trying to catch up with my body and you know come to terms with everything that had happened um, well, that's what I was professionally told. Um, however, I'm so proud of myself for how I dealt with my grief, how I dealt with um, the miscarriage and just everything that happened because it was a lot that happened. And I really took a lot of steps, active steps to um, process all of these emotions. And I'm at this point where we really believe in Allah, the universe, God, Buddha, all the spirits. This had to happen to me because it made me on the inside a person I'm incredibly proud to be. It made me 
the strongest version of myself, the best version of myself that I've ever been. And my future kids are going to be so much luckier to have this version of me as their mom one day, as opposed to the person I was before this whole experience happened. I feel so much more confident. I'm so excited and way less insecure about um, conceiving again in the future. And three months on now, I am physically actually the healthiest and happiest that I've ever been, possibly even in my life for a long, consistent um, period of time. It's as if um, I've heard that pregnancy and even instances like this with reproduction, it can actually sometimes just reset your whole reproductive system and then everything works really well. And yeah, as hard as it all was, I am so incredibly grateful for this chapter in my life. I'm so incredibly grateful to have discovered my own strength, um, which I wouldn't have if I wasn't thrown in such hot water. But yeah, that's my story. Please, ladies, look after your reproductive system. Um, know that if you go through miscarriage or loss, it's normal. You're not alone. Please seek help. Um, and know that grief looks different on everyone. Um, there's no right or wrong way to emerge from it and also trust your gut so if you think that something is wrong or that you are pregnant or that you need medical attention please go to the doctor please go and get yourself checked out I'm also looking forward to talking a whole lot more about PCOS on my channel I'm not a medical professional but I have of course um, made quite a few lifestyle changes that have really really impacted and changed um, so much of how this condition affects my life and um, if you'd like to learn from me or if there's anything specific you'd like to see relating to this topic let me know in the comment section and I'll see what I can do for you guys but just don't ask me specifically for advice because like I said I'm not a medical professional but I can answer questions pertaining to the changes that I have made Thank you all so much for watching. Um, I'm really looking forward to getting back into YouTube this year. I'm actually so excited about it. Um, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And um, yeah, I'll see you in my next video.